Welcome, everybody. Welcome to our winter webinar series uh, for 2022. And um, I'm, I'm Rosario Riley. If you haven't met me already or don't know who I am, I'm the founder of Aquinas Learning Program way back in 2009. And I'm going to begin this slideshow. All right. Um, the purpose is to, um, let's see here, encourage, I'm just making my thing bigger here. Uh, students through the liberal arts, and remember arts is artists or Latin for artists or skills for the free man to behold, wonder, and contemplate things which are true, good, and beautiful in order, and here's our goal, to cultivate wisdom and virtue in themselves and future generations, and sometimes even previous generations. Um, my colleagues and I are all learning at the same time as well. Uh, there are pillars of teaching that we focus on. There are skills, facts, and ideas. So those are the three pillars skills, facts, and ideas. And in order to elevate them, we, and because we're Catholics, we can talk about virtue as being the highest skill. Uh, facts, not every fact is something that is worth passing on. Um, we're teaching facts and traditions because these are the things that we pass down. Um, and we discuss and uh, look to truth when it comes to ideas. We enter into the great conversation, which is the foundational um, ideas of Western civilization informed by the Catholic faith. The goal is for our students to develop a taste and affection for what is true, good, and beautiful, as opposed to its opposites, and form a habit of mind, that of being inquisitive, perceptive, ordered, and contemplative leading to moral and intellectual virtue. So they will take right action based on right reason, which I know both Aristotle and, and Aquinas used to say often. And they would be open to God's will in their lives because they have, uh, as the catechism says, we are, we're made to, to know him, to love him and to serve him. So therefore in order to serve him, we must love him. And in order to love him, or really to love anyone, you must know them, right? So <clears throat> those are our goals. And uh, this paragraph here can be uh, summarized in that the goal is the moral and intellectual virtue by marinating them. I often use that word because I like cooking. And so marinating uh, makes sense to me. And that's how I see uh, our goals uh, with our children. They are always surrounded by the true, good, and beautiful, and their affections turn toward that. Okay, so how are we doing this and what are our components? We have the good books or great books. Good books are the precursor to the great books. You probably heard about the great books um, <clears throat> in the higher education components or college years. So the good books make them ready or marinate them so that they're ready for the great books. And reading good literature uh, helps in teaching ethics and what uh, a character should have done or shouldn't have done and what are the consequences. So, so the core integrated subjects are catechism, history, science, and civics. So those are the themes that we um, hang all of our, our cycles on and I will talk about cycles in a minute. We try to integrate across subjects. We uh, practice the living faith. We talk about the liturgical calendar um, and in everything that we learn, it is subordinate to the truth. So it's not just catechism as a subject by itself, religion class, you know, it's really everything. So when we're talking about science and the planets, we are talking about God's creation and we're talking about um, history in terms of salvation history. Uh, memory practice, uh, because we only know what we can remember, right? So it's very important to practice our memory. And while we're practicing to, how to memorize and retain information, um, why not memorize things that are worth memorizing? So the things that we do memorize are geographical maps, timeline. Uh, it's the same timeline we memorize throughout the different three cycles. Um, it's about 126 figures from 
the beginning creation all the way to uh, John Paul II and the towers and Mother Teresa. Um, we practice our memory with poetry, with Latin, with grammar. Um, so we, we have a lot of practice there. <clears throat> we also study fine arts, appreciation and application. So we study um, about a particular music or a particular art piece. We behold it first. Um, have the students look and, and apprehend what they're looking at, and then we discuss it after they've beheld it. We also have science discovery um, as part of our behold classes, and same thing, we uh, explore the splendor of God's order. And by the way, the ancients, I always like to remind people, define beauty as the splendor of order. We have oral presentations and rhetoric skills because we think it's very important uh, expression in itself, whether it be writing or orally, um, that human beings, it's part of being human that we're able to express ourselves. So from the earliest um, <clears throat> age in preschool, kindergarten, we already start with show and tell, oral presentations. And then when they climb up to the different grades, of course, it just gets more complicated in terms of what's expected of them. Um, and uh, all the way up to the high school oration. All right, uh, language arts <clears throat> is part of the trivium. The beginning of the trivium is learning language uh, where we have composition, grammar, uh, copy work, spelling, penmanship, um, <clears throat> and just a well, later on, I will go over exactly what how we do the, the composition grammar, but language arts in general is the beginning of the seven liberal arts, the first three being language arts. All right, and then we are very, very um, <clears throat> uh, big on philosophical discussions and ideas, formal logic, philosophy, all the way from the beginning, all the way to high school. And in the beginning, we see it in terms of just Socratic discussions on the stories they've read, perhaps, or on philosophical ideas. And it teaches, it, in the lower grades, we even have a philosophy 30-minute class, and it teaches them to reason better so that they're ready to go into the high school logic, formal logic, material logic, and philosophy classes. If you look at what we're teaching, again, there are the, the three pillars that I mentioned earlier, skills, facts, and ideas. Um, many parents are overwhelmed. They, they look at all the subjects, all the, you know, all the skills in, in a, a big list of 20 to 30 things that they have to learn. Um, what I like to suggest to parents is to think of just two things, skills and content. Skills are the things that they will be learning on an individual level or as needed, they grow based on mastery, right? Let's think about math, for instance. Um, content, on the other hand, is really information. It's the facts and ideas um, that we are learning and passing down and making connections. It's very important. So what we like to do is we divided the, the content into three repeating cycles, uh, cycle one, two, and three. The main themes are for cycle one, ancient times for history, Old Testament for catechism, biology and earth science. <clears throat> of course, we learn other content material like our science experiments and things, but they're integrated to these themes. For cycle two, we have medieval times, New Testament, um, astronomy and physics. Cycle three has um, <clears throat> modern times, Catechism of the Catholic Church, anatomy, and chemistry. What's important to note here with the content, you'll see that it's, it's meant to be a curriculum for the whole family. So when um, I started this a long time ago, my main purpose for doing this sort of unit study was that I had five kids that I had to teach, and obviously there were different ages, but instead of teaching one uh, biology and another one, you know, astronomy or uh, insects or something and somebody else uh, anatomy. I wanted it so that we would have the whole family learning the same things. It's a journey that the whole family can take. So field trips make sense to everybody because we're all learning the same thing. All right. Okay, so next we're going to go to uh, the different levels to explain those.
First, we have the Scola Parva level, which is uh, Parva means small. So that's our preschool and pre-K level. Mixed, by the way, mixed ages. And then we have the Scola Prima 1 and 2, which um, the Scola Prima 1 is a mixed age level of grades 1 through 3. And the Prima level 2 is, again, mixed age um, grades 4 through 6. Scola Alta, or high school, uh, Scola Alta 1 is grades 7 through 9, and Scola Alta 2 is grades 10 to 12. And the reason we broke it up that way is you have the three-year cycle studied at each of these levels. Okay, what about going deeper? We're keeping it simple. You, have, you can do minimal, just come to center or just have that one day of introduction, read some, do your skills, and that's it. That's it. Don't try to do five different history, why? Um, and what if you love something? Read more about whatever war we're studying and um and now it's ancient times so ancient egypt we did hammurabi's law and all these kinds of things and so the ancient greeks um you can use library books again youtube and you can learn and go deeper into the thing that we're studying versus studying two other things okay so this is what i'm trying the different cycles you are going to go further up and further in and go deeper okay adding every new book game activity exactly all right and that ends our presentation thank you for coming thank you for joining us in this uh, winter webinar and i hope you much blessings and success and delighting um, in your homeschool